Good afternoon. Welcome to our celebration of the Eucharist here at St. Thomas the Apostle. Today is the third Sunday of Easter. Is there anyone celebrating a birthday this week? Or an anniversary? Yes. All right. 31 years, happy anniversary. <laughs> 55, <laughs> congratulations. Okay, blessings upon both of you, both of you uh, couples. We're invited to remember this intention for all those suffering from depression. Let's include that intention as well as our own before the Lord today. I would guess that uh, most of you have gone to a reunion, maybe even a family reunion or a high school reunion, especially high school reunion because they aren't every year, and you fail to recognize some of your classmates. But in the case of family, sometimes family members aren't there all the time either for every 10 years or whatever, and you don't know those new members or you may have forgotten some of the older members. So it's hard to recognize them sometimes and because they look different physically, maybe they've lost some hair, maybe they've gained some weight and so on and so on. Changes occur just with age. The two disciples that we're going to hear about in the gospel today met Jesus along the way to Emmaus and they're so preoccupied with what happened to Jesus in Jerusalem that he was arrested and unjustly tried and put to death that, that, that they can hardly stand it. <laughs> and they're talking and talking and talking about this event. And Jesus comes with them and they invite him in and they, we're walking along this way, leaving the city. But they didn't recognize Jesus in his risen state. We don't know what that risen state was, but we know it was not... Um, like a, a normal physical body because he passed through walls and he passed through doors and so on as he appeared to the apostles and all of the gospels we've been hearing since Easter. And it wasn't until they shared the meal with him that they recognized him and then their eyes of faith were opened. We come together each weekend and as more of you come now that because we haven't seen some of you for a while it's even a, um, a a double blessing because it's good to see you again. We come to share the word as we hear from the first two readings and the gospel. We listen to the homily and so on. And then we come to be nourished at the altar. Jesus becomes present at each of our masses in a very special way. Yes, he's present in our hearts and in our spirits because we're all baptized or at least the majority of us are. But he comes to us in a special way because he wants to nourish us and feed us. So I think um, the, when Father says those words of consecration, if today you can just pay attention a little bit more and he, really listen to him say, after he blesses it at, at the offertory time, and then he comes and says, this is my body, this bread is now my body, and this cup is now my blood. If we truly believe that, then as we come up to receive him in communion, Let's just try a little bit more to be attentive to that reality that Jesus comes to feed us. The Son of God, Jesus Christ, our Savior, comes to give us nourishment. That's pretty awesome if we really think of what that mystery and miracle is. So let's pray for one another during this Mass that we just recognize a little bit more intently what's really going on because sometimes routine gets us out of that practice. And so we want to, to really remember the Mass is a sacred moment. And that's one of the reasons why we come together as a community, as a family, to celebrate, because it is a sacred moment. I'm gonna be exiting a bit because I'm doing the live streaming, so don't think that I've disappeared forever. I'll be back after the Liturgy of the Word. Please stand.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Gathered for our Eucharist once again this day, we gather to celebrate the only gift in life that matters, that our God is so deeply in love with us. And this great Easter season, we celebrate that beautiful gift of God. As Sister alluded to, once again, we, the baptized, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, are ever at work transforming us, drawing us, leading us, even now. So once again, let us recall our baptism as we share a rite of sprinkling today. This great season is not one of penance, but one of great praise. And so once more, let us lift our voices, our hearts, as we join together in singing our glory to God in the highest.
let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that, rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Let us be seated once more and be nourished by God's word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought you to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet, while they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds 
to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So every year I travel with my wife down to Florida to visit our mother-in-law. And before we go to her home in my famous honey to-do list I usually get, we spend the first few days in a place called Madeira Beach. And it's part of a chain of islands on the Gulf Coast of Florida. Now while we're relaxing there, one of my favorite things to do is to get up in the sunrise in the morning and to walk out down the beach along the ocean. It's just so peaceful. The waves are breaking on the sand and usually I get to see the dolphins hunting for food just offshore. It's absolutely incredible and the best part of it all, there's almost nobody there. It's almost like being by yourself. It's like being in a different world just by myself. One morning, a couple years ago, I was walking down the beach all by myself. Here comes this man on a bicycle. He's approaching me and he goes to pass me. Now he's wearing a helmet and dark glasses. It was kind of difficult to see what he looked like. But as he's passing me, there was just something very familiar about him. So familiar, in fact, that as he went by me, I stopped and I turned around. And as I did, I noticed he went about 20 feet and he also stopped and turned around and looked at me. And for a few moments, nothing was said. But then he spoke and he said just one word, which was, Steve? And I go, Dick? And we both start laughing. What were the odds that somebody I worked with for years in Manitowoc, Wisconsin, that I would see him on this empty beach? That person whom I least expected to see in that moment of time. But there he was. Unbelievable, isn't it? I think that story sounds very much about that reading we just heard a few minutes ago, doesn't it? We hear about the two disciples. They're on the road to Emmaus, and they're telling the rest of the apostles about this. They're on the road to Emmaus. And when they least expect it, there's Jesus. Now, I'm not sure if the apostles actually believed them or thought they were just hallucinating or something. But as they're telling them the story, Incredibly, it happens again. And when they least expect it, there is Jesus, right there in the middle of them. I can't even imagine how they felt. Personally, I think it's probably kind of like me and my friend meeting him on the beach. But in their case, way, way beyond that. Because not only was Jesus their teacher and their friend, he was supposed to be dead. And that's just the thing, isn't it? The apostles knew that he was dead. He had been beaten, whipped, scourged. His hands and his na feet were nailed to a cross. All those people around him seen that he had died. There was no doubt whatsoever that Jesus was dead. And because of that, the apostles, all that they had been taught by Jesus, all that they had believed in him as their Messiah, was gone. 
And it's because of all that, that even though Jesus had warned them about what was going to happen, they still couldn't believe their eyes. Jesus was there. He was alive. He was among them. It meant that everything that he had said to them was indeed true. In other words, because of those appearances that Jesus made, everything that he had taught them, all his teachings, everything he had said about how he was going to suffer, his death and his resurrection, it was all real. And because of that, it gave them hope. It gave them hope that they would be able to go out and preach in the name of Jesus. And no matter what happened to them while they were doing this, they didn't have to worry because Jesus would always be at their side. No matter what they went through. And in the end, they too would have life after death. But here's the really good news. It wasn't just about the disciples, about Jesus being in their lives. Jesus is with us also. And no, we may not get physically to see him like I was able to see my friend on the beach in Florida or like the disciples were able to see Jesus on the road to Emmaus. But Jesus is with us in our everyday lives. Do you know how? He's with us when we read the Bible, when we pray. He's with us in that cross that we wear around our necks. He's with us in a rosary that we have in our pocket or in our purse or maybe hanging from the rear view mirror of our car. He's especially with us here in this church as we listen to the readings. And he's especially with us when we partake in the Eucharist. And it's because of all this, we're able to be with Jesus, to walk with him, to speak with him. And he speaks to us also, if we're willing to listen and to open our minds to hear what he has to say. Jesus is our life. And most of all, he's offered us the forgiveness of our sins and the promise of eternal salvation. And I'll end with this thought. As we go through all our life, in all its ups and downs, sometimes we may wonder, where is God in all of this? But God, Jesus, is always with us. We may not be able to physically see him, but he is always with us. He's with us always when we need him most. He's also with us when we least expect it. Jesus is always with us because he loves us always. Amen. Let us rise and once more profess our faith and proclaim, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. 
he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. To you, good and gracious God, your daughters and sons, we turn once more. You are our life, our health, our peace, as we share these humble prayers once more. For blessings upon Pope Francis and his outreach to the poor and needy of the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That all people revere the sanctity of life from conception to natural death, we pray to the Lord. That the unemployed and underemployed find meaningful work and be comforted by our loving God, we pray to the Lord. That those in a prison of isolation be welcomed and comforted by the hospitality of a loving community, we pray to the Lord. That all members of this parish community be united in love and service, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For a generous response to our annual bishop's appeal, as we reach out to serve others, we pray to the Lord. For all the faithful departed, for our deceased relatives and friends, for all the intentions in our prayer request book, and in particular today, for Edna, Florence, and Kieran Joseph Minahan, and Patrick Joseph Minahan. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Loving God, you are truly creator of the heavens and the earth, but you gift us with your only begotten Son, Jesus. Fill our hearts with joy and wonder at the power of your love and your peace, we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us be seated once again. Let us rise and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain, who lives forever. 
Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts join together in that unending hymn of your glory as they sing. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He is the word that brings salvation. He is the hand you stretch out to sinners. He is the way that leads to your peace. When we ourselves had turned away from you, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat, we ask you. Sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son who left us this pledge of his love. We offer you what you have bestowed upon us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you accept us together with your Son, and in the saving banquet graciously endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges, divides us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. May he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope, David our Bishop, and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, and yes, with our brothers and sisters, those of every race and language who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
Through him and with him and in him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 We rise once again, for it is at the Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, that we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of the Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace. I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. We behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those now called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us all into everlasting life.
Uh, special thanks to Vicki for organizing and inviting us to the ministry training day uh, this past morning. It was both informative and interesting, and all those participating in it, I think, took away some good information. We'll be sharing some of that information with all of you as we gradually um, put that in print in bulletins and online, and also some um, live instructions as, as far as your being here in church and keeping safe. For your planning, we'll be celebrating First Communion at all the Masses on the first weekend of May. That's May 1st and 2nd. Four or five of our young folks will be celebrating at each Mass, similar to what we had at Confirmation. And so they'll be seated in just the front seat or two, or pew or two, um, all around the sections for that, so that it's again May 1st and 2nd. Holy Family Conservatory of Music is inviting members to join a handbell choir, one for beginners, sixth grade and up, and others for who, those who've had experience. Please check our website if you're interested in handbell choir. We will be having a retire of our debt party, which we promised we would have when we retired our debt in September, and that will be Sunday, August 1st. Now, we need a few volunteers to help plan that party, so please let Vicki or myself know, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're interested. We'd hope there might be six or seven or eight people who would be organizing. Um, we're gonna have a simple meal, probably bratwurst and hamburgers, that kind of thing, and some live music or maybe some DJ music. We'll see how it goes. And anyway, we're going to get together to celebrate and burn our loan. Uh, thank you again for all of your generous giving that allowed us to do that a year ahead of time. We were projecting it for November of this year, and we were able to do it September in 20, 2020. So uh, if you're interested and have some, maybe some experience from our picnic, although it won't be a picnic, but it'll be food for everyone on the, on the church. So it's not a, a fundraiser. It'll be just fun getting together and celebrating family and community. Let us rise. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.